well, as I said, um, it's a very good actor in this movie, Mike Stallone, and uh, Bert Young again, that's in a great performance. Um, he's sort of like a tries to bring some humour to the film. Not all of his lines work, but you know, it's no worse than these in the other films. Um, other memorable actors in the film were probably few and far between, to be perfectly honest. I mean, I wouldn't say this film was the best acted film I've ever seen. Uh, Stallone's opponent didn't come across as sort of quite as memorable a personality as, say, Mr. T was as Clubber Lang, or Dolph Lundgren was as Ivan Drago, or even uh, Carl Weathers was as Apollo Creed. But at the same time, I don't think Stallone meant him to come across any as big as those characters. Um, he came across as someone who just was all about winning fights and not really putting any heart into them, just getting as many knockouts as he could. And he's just sort of, you know, your modern day boxer who doesn't really care about the the style side of boxing, just wants to knock as many people out as possible. He wasn't an evil character like Clubber Lang, and it wasn't sort of a an evil comic book opponent like Ivan Drago again. Um, but, you know, he didn't do too badly for someone who's just a boxer and not actually an actor. Having said that, like I say, he's not the best actor in the world, but it's sufficient enough and it does the job that the film's supposed to do of showing that Stallone is going up against someone who relies more on just knocking people out than putting their heart into something. And also his character gained something. Antonio's character gained something in terms of, like, pride and actually himself, he gained sort of eye of the tiger in a way that he didn't have. Uh, as a following scene, another clip, also demonstrates. Got everything money can buy. Except what he can. It's pride. Pride is what got your ass out of here. You losing is what brought you back. But people like you, they need to be tested. These are challenge. But you know that ain't gonna happen. Ain't nothing out there, Mark. There's always somebody out there. Always. And when that time comes, and you find something standing in front of you, something that they ain't running, it ain't backing up, and it's hitting on you when you're too damn tired to breathe, you find that situation on you, that's good. Because that's baptism under fire. <laughs> when you get through that, you find the only kind of respect that matters in this damn world. Self-respect. Thanks, Mom. I appreciate it. What can a champ do for you? You can give me some of that money you got. <laughs> <laughs> you know I like it more, but not that much. <laughs> so, um, how can I sum up this movie? Um, well, you know, some people will be annoyed that Talia Shia didn't come back as Adrian. I personally think it was a great decision on the slightest part to actually kill her character off because even though she's not in the film she's actually everywhere in the film in a sense and um, so that does gain a new love interest in terms of a character called Lil Marie in this film who he first met back in the first Rocky movie when she was like a teenager and she's all grown up now but you can tell that there's only one woman in his life in this particular moment just before he enters the ring when she kisses him on the cheek and he doesn't sort of return it and Adrian is still resonating in him and particularly the film's final shot really does sort of hammer home the fact that even though Adrian's gone she's still a driving force behind him and um, you know that the film doesn't suffer for that in terms of um, pleasing fans of both the original films and the sort of more comic book style films I think it does a good job on both counts um, you know the end fight is very sort of hysterically exciting and um, even though you're not sort of rooting in a pantomime manner against the villain, you're still rooting for Stallone to make it all the way sort of thing. And um, he also makes the fight more dramatic and he does a few things that Rocky Star hasn't seen before, like introduce real flashy graphics, realistic graphics. Um, now and again, goes into a sort of Sin City style cinematography with black and white and the blood showing up as a, only red on black and white. Um, and... Uh, it's just it's just a really well done fight scene and I think by the end of the fight scene you're kind of in a way sad that it's all over and 
at the same time you're exhilarated because the rocky music kicks in and it all fits with all the other fights pretty well and also the training montage is done really well this time as well um, the only thing I would criticise is that I would like to see a little bit more of the training montage and I get the feeling that Sly actually cut scenes out of this movie I don't know I, I, get, I, I think I've heard him say he actually cut scenes out of this movie but I'd love to see what scenes were deleted because I think the film could have done with maybe just an extra 10 minutes or so more to show him training and preparing for the fight and um, also re re sort of um, extending on some of the other character relationships he had in the film particularly with Lil Marie's son who he, uh, he gets to interact with but all in all I think it was a fitting end to the saga and it's definitely packed a punch in my book and I think everyone out there should go and see it and uh, well here's my final score <laughs>